I'm here today to talk about how improv comedy's techniques can be used in your life to solve problems and also just as a general world view. So there's some common misconceptions about what improv actually is. There's a stand-up comedy club, have you guys heard of it, called The Improv, maybe? <laughs> so actually, stand-up is pretty different from what improv actually is. Uh, stand-up is usually performed by one person, and they write it before and then deliver jokes. And uh, Saturday Night Live is similar in that it's a sketch comedy show, so it's all written out beforehand. Although a lot of people who perform on the show are improv comedians, it's not improvised. So now that we've got those misconceptions out of the day, out of the way, I got another one. Uh, a lot of people think improv is just like shooting people with guns and doing really absurd motions with their hands, but that's not really the kind of techniques I wanted to talk to you about today, even though I've been shot many times in improv. So what is improv exactly? I would describe improv as being a way to express in an art form how to collaborate and how to create a scene or a moment that's only in that moment while thinking quickly on your feet. So the first improv show I ever went to was in New York City at an improv theater. And I went with my parents and they thought it was kind of weird. <laughs> They're more used to shows on TV that have written scripts, whereas I was really in awe of this show and I thought there was something magical about it. So when I came to Brandeis in fall of 2013, I auditioned and joined the improv group TBA. And I really discovered and uh, got into this magic of what improv could be by performing and rehearsing with my group of about eight people. Then when I lived in DC for the summer, I met some professional improvisers who toured across the country teaching improv comedy. And I also got to work in a group of women who performed improv in the DC area. And then at the end of the summer, I took a class at that same theater that I went to for my first improv show. And there, I learned some techniques about what it meant to be an improviser. And from there, shaped what it meant for my worldview. So I'm gonna share with you today what those techniques are in an improv comedy context, and then how we can apply them to your life. So one of the most important concepts of improv comedy is yes and. When you say yes and, you're agreeing with whatever your scene partner who's creating that moment with you is saying while also adding on and supplementing it. So uh, let's do a little exercise real quick. Can I have a volunteer from the audience? Anybody? Over there, thanks for volunteering. So I'm gonna say a statement, like a line of dialogue. Yeah, you can just stay where you are, no worries. <laughs> Relax. <laughs> and after I say that, you're gonna say yes and, and continue a line of dialogue with me, and okay. I'll respond with yes and too. And we'll just keep it going to kind of show the rest of the audience what I'm trying to talk about. Okay. So, let's see. Chrysanthemum, our kitchen is on fire. Yes, and the fire station is also on fire. <laughs> yes, and I didn't realize that our fire station was so flammable, but I guess we're gonna need to buy a new house and a new fire station. Yes, and we're in a drought, so where are we gonna get water? <laughs> Yes, and I fire. just checked the fire hydrant outside and it's just vapor shooting out of it. Yes, and... Oh, Desert. you're dying! You are dying is what's happening with Thank the flame. You. Great job. Give it up for our lovely volunteer. So that definitely showed what that concept is talking about. It's constantly listening closely and adding on to what is going on to create this scenario and make the rest of the audience feel like they're a part of it all. Another part of improv is being present and being in the moment, living in the moment, as a meme might say, <laughs> and really trying to create what that moment looks like. Whether you're in a field uh, and interacting with the people or fairies in that field, or you're picking up flowers in it, trying to make yourself a whole part of what's going on in this exact moment. So that leads me to my next one, which is gift giving. So let's say I picked that flower from a field and then I gave it to someone. That would be kind of like a literal gift. But gift giving is more than that. It's giving someone a role, giving someone a relationship to build off of throughout the scene, to create it, and make sure that they're not standing there alone. 
Like I mentioned with stand-up comedy, it's written before and you're standing there alone giving jokes, but with improv comedy, it's more building off of each other and making sure that you're not standing in front making all the funny jokes and that you're supporting your partner by giving each other gifts throughout the rest of the scene and making each other both look good by supporting each other. Another important part of improv comedy is taking risks, making those big choices. So it is a risk in itself to be improvising, to be on stage, and to be at the will of the audience and whoever's on stage with you. But in general, once you're in the scene, you need to make those choices that will continue it. And let's say whoever I'm in a scene with says that I'm a beekeeper. Now, I know nothing about bees other than that they sting and it really hurts and they're yellow. But if I was told that I was a beekeeper, I would have to take that risk and pretend that I was the best beekeeper in the world and I would learn everything about being a beekeeper and just make it up on the spot and really take that risk and take it to heart for the rest of the scene. But the underlying factor of being an improviser is to have fun, to play. Really improvising is like being a child in a playground and like I said, being present, taking in everything around you and supporting the people around you and having fun with it and really just letting yourself free and letting yourself have fun. Okay, so before I get into how to approach problems through all of these techniques, can you guys uh, do a little bit of an improv suggestion uh, type exercise with me? Are we down? Sounds good. So uh, let's hear. What did you guys have for breakfast today? Just shout it out. Wow, good eaters. Healthy. Thank you. Okay, and who is your favorite person in the entire world? David. Nice. Okay. And uh, what are some problems that you guys are having in your life right now? Yep. I feel you, I have a lot of issues too. <laughs> All right, so let's tackle those. So in terms of relationships, you wanna be using the improv techniques gift giving and yes anding. Like I mentioned before, these techniques are about supporting each other and making sure that you're doing selfless acts in order to ensure your scene partner, or in this case, your maybe life partner or a new friend, really feels valued. And developing a sort of trust with them. And in terms of relationships, it's important if you're having a conflict with whoever you're in a relationship with, to yes and them so that you can meet on the same page, even if you're not agreeing with them and all the points they're making, to make sure that they feel heard by using that yes and statement. Another issue that I've come across a lot at Brandeis is anxiety and stress. With all the work that we have and graduation coming up, uh, it's a pretty stressful time to be in, but I use the improv technique of being present to really ground myself and meditate on what is stressing me out and deal with the anxiety that I'm facing. So when I have all these assignments or anything that's stressing me out, I look around me and like I would in an improv scene and picking up the flowers and really engaging with everything in my environment and my, in my reality, I do the same for real life and just engage with everything that I see and think about it in a critical way so that I'm not just focusing on what's stressing me out. Actually, therapists and psychologists throughout Chicago have been engaging in a study about how anxiety can be coped with better through improv and through the idea of play, which I talked about earlier. And they're having really great success with therapy and engaging with different patients who are really suffering with this. There's also workshops being held among prisons in order to engage with inmates who need to kind of get this release of stress out of their system. And by engaging in the play that in, is involved in improv, it really helps to liberate their minds. So the last problem that I heard a bunch of you say graduation, which is definitely looming, and so are our professional careers. So in terms of networking, you might wanna think about using yes and and gift giving because even though you may just want to get that job and you wanna win and, and really get it, you need to think about what gifts you are offering to that company or nonprofit or whatever it may be. And by giving those gifts and thinking selflessly, selflessly <laughs> you'll be able to yes and your way into a position. In addition to that, 
companies and as well as uh, rescue teams and police groups all over the country are using improv workshops as a way to take big risks and really make those big choices in times of crisis. And I think that using that improv approach has really been helpful in times of real stress where companies or maybe it's a police officer doesn't exactly know what to do. So even though I'm only 22, I've really taken on this worldview of using my improv approach. And I'm still learning how to deal with all these problems and how to cope with my career, anxiety, relationships. But using improv has really helped me to expand upon that and overall not take life too seriously. So please, go forth and improvise. Thank you.